Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, really good to be here, and I'm really pleased to have been invited to give a talk. Today I'm going to talk about uh, energy policy. I'm not an expert in energy policy, I'll tell you that right away. Uh, my area of expertise is in radiation biology, and to bone up on energy policy. Um, I have a number of colleagues, very close friends, who are experts on energy policy, and I've run it by them, and they say to me that there are no obvious bloopers. <laughs> In the last three months, you have not been able to pick up any newspaper without the, um, energy policy featuring, particularly about electricity prices, um, big sticks, uh, and electricity and gas prices, um, being discussed ad nauseum. Um, it's a big political football. I'm also going to talk a little bit about peak oil, but the thing about peak oil is that is it's like an elephant in the room. Nobody discusses it very much, although it's extremely important. We're going to talk about demand versus supply. Everybody talks about supply. Nobody talks about demand, although that's very important. We're going to talk about <coughs> the government's obsession with nuclear power. It's about the best way I can put it. Um, it is deeply, deeply, deeply committed to nuclear power, and um, I find it very difficult to explain. And also, um, the thing that has put the cat amongst the pigeons, um, Mr. Miliband's uh, promise at uh, the Airport Conference that he was going to have a 20 month freeze on energy, energy prices or gas and oil prices and also prices when if Labour were. With their UK energy policy, um, this, is what, this is my focus. I'm going to be trying to discuss um, how we deal with dwindling reserves with crude oil and gas. How we meet our energy needs, both safely and economically, especially our needs for electricity. I'm going to be talking about that quite a bit. How we respond to global warming, big, 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 massive challenge. And how we talk about, within all of that, um, what about jobs and what about fuel poverty? Um, a really shocking statistic is that every hour in the winter, eight people die of fuel poverty from hypothermia. Eight people every hour. That's according to the NHS. I can get that, pick that out for you I just found it in my yesterday. And jobs, um, just to give you a little big net, um, the total number of jobs which will be created in, if the UK goes ahead with its uh, um, nuclear projects, say four nuclear power stations, will be permanent jobs, not just construction jobs, will be about maybe a thousand people if, if we're lucky. Guess how many jobs there are in the renewable industries in Germany right now? 440,000 jobs. Wouldn't it be nice to have that over here? <coughs> By the way, that's direct jobs, not indirect. Indirect would be about a million. I should also mention that this, these are some difficulties with um, talking about um, UK energy systems. The fact is that energy demand is falling in most uh, European countries. Partly got to do with the recession, of course, but it's also got to do with increasing energy efficiency. Um, what's happening um, in a number of landmark areas is that local communities are taking over their own energy futures, especially in Germany and uh, to a lesser extent in Austria and Switzerland. Um, in other words, um, it's interesting that RWE in Germany has uh, announced um, uh, warnings for profit been going down. And the reason is, is because local communities in German, Germany are saying goodbye to RWE and generating their own electricity through you know, renewable energy. There's big pressures, particularly in Germany, um, um, on the, the fossil fuel industries and the nuclear industry, of course, in Germany. Um, and that's making big changes, which we really don't fully understand. And we don't really know what's going to happen in Europe as a result. And there's also big changes in the states from shale oil gas. Um, are these changes going to impact on the EU? One could argue that they already have, and that's the reason why almost all um, coal mining in Britain has stopped because of the import of uh, United States coal. And why is that? Because in the United States, they can't sell the coal there because shale oil is much cheaper. So they dump it here in Britain. That's the reason why in, up in Grangemouth, um, the oil refiner there, the, the workers had to um, uh, uh, accept much, much worse terms because of the threat of shale oil coming in from the States. So 
shale oil is having uh, a series of effects willy-nilly here. There's in so many different things happening. And it, it sort of illustrates the, um, the very wide area that I'm talking about, the fact that some areas impact on other areas that you wouldn't expect. Here's a little little big net. Um, in the United States, um, DuPont is suing the shale oil companies um, not to build um, uh, liquefaction facilities in the United States because Exxon wants to spend nine billion in Louisiana to build a liquefaction plant so they can export their cheap oil, cheap uh, gas, one third of the price happening here in Britain, um, and make a lot of money. And DuPont doesn't want that. They want the gas for as a feedstock, nice cheap feedstock. So they're suing them to stop it. <coughs> they keep on. It's, uh, as I said, it's the elephant in the room. It's very difficult to really talk authoritatively about it. Um, how many people here have read today's Independent? In it, there's an article by Jeremy Leggett, and he's just written a book uh, called The Energy of Nations, and I would strongly recommend that one reads it for an update on what's actually happening with peak oil. Essentially, he thinks that there's going to be an oil cra carbon crash in 2015. It might happen. And it's going to be like uh, financial crashes in previous years, um, or the property price crash. It's, it's so unstable that it's going to crash and it's going to have big, big effects on it. The bottom line is get a bike. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm not quite sure what, what would the crash be? Crash? It, 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 well, the, there wouldn't be any fossil fuel reserves left, okay. which could be used without, you know. Huge prices. He reckons that there, ha there has been peak oil and it's reached in 2006. In other words, um, we're d using up less and less and less um, uh, oil because we're not finding it. We, the oil company, and Jeremy's book. I have a lot of time for, for Jeremy. Like, just give you a flavour of where we are at. This is the UK in the last, second quarter of 2013 this year, and it's this is gas. And this is imports and exports of gas, natural gas. And you can see that there's a lot of interconnection with Europe. And that is good for security, because it means that if one bank goes down, you've got others coming in. So there's a lot of interconnectedness. <coughs> for example, we get most of our, these two here, are, from, are in fact in Norway. This map is a little <coughs> bit misleading. Um, you could say, well, they had to squeeze it all in, that's true. But these are all. We get most of our <coughs> gas right now from Norway. We've got 20-year contracts uh, signed up with Norway. They're making a lot of money. Mm. Norway is a very rich country as a result of the money that we're giving. And, uh, but there's also <coughs> some gas fields here. There's a lot of interconnections with uh, <coughs> European countries. And there's a the big, big terminal here at Milford Haven um, with uh, liquid nat natural gas uh, containers coming in. Uh, and into the UK system. This is, gas is relatively good in other words, right now. Okay, so I'm going to look at the global side. The reason being is that you guys are called this, uh, this scientists for global responsibility. So I thought, if I was to come along and just give a UK talk, hey, that's not good enough. We are global. So here we go. Um, so we talked about, this is the world energy use by source. And it shows you that we get almost all of our energy. Energy means gas, oil, electricity, everything. Um, uh, over three quarters um, from fossil fuels, 80%. Um, and this is uh, renewables, about 16%. And the renewables can be divided further. And as you can see, there's a lot of biomass heat there and geothermal heat. Uh, hydropower, That's, this is world energy consumption, okay? Um, it's a lot of potential for renewable energy. Let me tell you, incredible amounts of it. Um, now these figures are in exajoules, that's um, a billion, billion joules, 10 to the 18th um, from scientists. Um, this is uh, from Godfrey Boyle, a good colleague. Um, it shows that the total amount of en energy coming in from the sun is five and a half million exajoules, ah, a humongous amount of energy, okay? A lot of that's reflected straight back into space again, 
And um, this is the amount that stays on the Earth, about three and three quarter million exajoules. And this is a split up. And you can see a lot of it is solar radiation, a lot of hydrological cycle, wind convection, photosynthesis, da 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 da. These are the, um, um, the amounts of uh, energy which are available for use. Now, if you compare this with the annual global energy used in the UK now, which is 500 exajoules, <laughs> you can see there's a factor of um, seven and a half thousand times larger comes in every year from the sun. In other words, the whole amount of energy used by man, <laughs> mankind, is a pipsqueak compared with the sun. And this is a rather sobering slide. It just shows you, hey man, we can do this with renewable energy. We can do it. Uh, these are, this is, RE means, uh, does not mean religious education. <laughs> it might, but it actually means renewable energy. Okay. Uh, and as you can see here, um, this is a chart over the last uh, six years, well, only up to 2011. But you can see um, the, uh, what's actually happening. And in fact, if I had a, a slide going on to 2013, this would be still be going up like this. It's increasing exponentially worldwide. However, if you look at um, government subsidies, we'll see if this is the situation here. Uh, black is for fossil fuels, white is for renewable energy. Ah. As you can see, a huge amount of um, uh, finance provided um, uh, for subsidies in the Soviet Union, I'm uh, sorry, in Russia, this is the United States, that is fossil fuels, this is uh, renewables, and in Japan it's the other way around, probably not. Uh, a great deal of, uh, of uh, support for renewables and only a little bit for, well, they don't burn much um, fossil fuels. But this, and this is the UK here, um, a tiny amount of, um, of subsidies for renewables compared with fossil fuels. Uh, all, all of these, most of these slides you will see, which will be made available, you will see uh, there, um, there, where I get this from. In other words, it's all fully referenced. I'm going to switch now to the UK electricity scene. I mentioned earlier that uh, demand is also just as important as supply. And this gives you, I mean, there's so much difference between the United States, between Britain you know, and, uh, and Germany, it's chalk and cheese. It's, I, I know quite a few Germans and I visit Germany a lot and uh, when I'm in Germany hearing about what's going on in the UK, I sometimes pull my hair out. It's just so crazy the things that are going on Look from a German perspective. Seriously. You should, um, just a little visit to another country, suddenly you realize how, how weird we are in Britain, really. Well, I should say, the current administration's policies are very weird indeed. <laughs> I mean, this is the government's revised uh, overarching national, national policy statement. So <coughs> there was going to be a doubling, forecasted a doubling of installed electricity generating capacity by 2050. Doubling. In the same year, in exactly the same month, in fact, the German government said there was going to be a 25% cut by 2050. Hey, go figure. <laughs> We're going to double our electricity supply, and they're going to cut it by a quarter. You know, what planet are we living in? Yeah. We're both in the year. We're both in the year. The thing is that Germany has already uh, exceeded this 25% cut. Yeah. 